Hello again, everyone, and thank you for all your feedback on my first episode. The response absolutely blew me away. Today's episode will be a little different, as I'm sharing a time-lapse recording where I use my undecorated station asset to retrofit a realistic railway station into an existing area of my city. This is the first of three episodes where I'll show you how to do the same in urban, industrial and rural settings. This build will focus on an urban setting directly inspired by North London and the London Overground line which runs through it. I realise that a lot of what I show today might go past a little too quickly, so I plan to follow up with another video in the same style as episode 1, which will focus in detail on the most requested techniques. So, do let me know what you'd like to see next time, but until then, let's get started. So the first thing I'll be doing here is to clear out some of the existing track and replace it with the undecorated station asset. When using the replacer mod, you will see on the right hand side um, a number of different tracks that you can select. In this situation, I'm going to use the wired gravel and concrete tracks. And once you select them on the right hand side, when you plop that asset, um, it will then use the type of railway that you selected. So if we just move this into place, I've used the fine movement control within Move It to make sure that lines up and then quickly redrawing the tracks over the top. Now, this station that we're building today is inspired by the North London line. Uh, this is a London Overground line um, and it was actually quite an old railway line that has been taken over by Transport for London back in about 2009, I think. Um, and anyone who's travelled on these will recognise a lot of the elements that I'll be building today. It's not just about the, the logos and the orange signs that you'll be seeing, um, but also to some, some of the buildings and the designs that I've used there are very, very typical for that area. Right now I'm just laying out the platforms themselves. These are some fantastic sets of networks by Seb Nichols, and these are designed kind of specifically with the UK in mind. Um, they come in a couple of different sets, so there's I think, I think nine different types of platforms, each of them with an extension, uh, a terrain conforming and non-terrain conforming as well. So it's a really comprehensive set of assets that you can use. What I'm doing now is to use a, a prop of the train that I'm going to be running on this line to gauge how far away the platform should be from the tracks. So if you align the platform to the train and then align the train to the tracks, then you know that once you run a live vehicle through here, um, everything will line up quite neatly. These are some of the extensions I was talking about. So these are really flexible. So you can use them as I have here just to extend the depth of a platform that you're building. Um, but you will see shortly, I also use these to create um, some disabled access ramps as well, um, so that you can you know, deliver a station that is uh, more realistic, because many modern stations now um, have requirements under law to make sure that they are accessible. And you know, the best way you can do that is with a ramp. Um, lifts as well, quite common. Um, depending on where you are in the world, you're probably going to have different regulations here. and especially in London, where a lot of the tube lines here are completely inaccessible uh, just because of the age of the system. It has costs a lot of money and they can be quite significant engineering tasks to retrofit access to these ancient stations. Fortunately here, plenty of space to work with and everything is on solid and surface ground. So in this situation, it's a really nice way that you can add additional realism to your station. So you will see in this video, I tend to jump around a little bit when I'm building things. Um, I will often start on one corner, get it kind of halfway done, go off and deal with something else and then come back again a little bit later on. Um, so I've done the best that I can to edit this into some kind of meaningful, um, meaningful chronology, but some things might appear that I didn't necessarily build on camera because I think I was working with around about three and a half, maybe a little bit more, um, three and a half hours of footage that I've compressed down into um, just under 20 minutes here. In this section here, um, I am using a tram railing, which I've converted into a procedural object. So the PO mod or procedural object mod 
allows you to edit individual vertices of an asset. So you can see that what I'm doing here is to basically select the vertical posts and then drop them down slightly so that I can have a railing where the posts remain vertical, but the top kind of is angled down to support the slope of the ramp. PO is really handy to be able to customize assets that are almost perfect, um, like what I'm doing here with these railings, which is that the design is great, the detail is great, it's just slightly the wrong shape for what I need, so I can change the scale and move and re-angle and change the heights of individual pillars to make them work. So here I am creating a retaining wall. Somebody on um, one of my Reddit posts was asking how I did this. So hopefully this is helpful for them to see. It's simply a matter of taking a retaining wall asset like these from uh, Revo, uh, these uh, brick arcades and bringing them down to the height, the kind of the height that you want. And then this gap that you can see in between the retaining walls and the terrain we will cover that over later using some of the ploppable grass assets. So here I'm creating some stairs uh, to access the station. Um, so this is pretty common in the UK as well. Um, what you may see more of in this kind of layout would be kind of a more grand entrance at the bottom because a lot of these tracks were built on viaducts. So it would always be a step up to the platforms, especially on the lines coming out of London Bridge Station. You can see uh, a couple of ghost stations in there where if you walk the, through the underpass, you'll see you know old station names or the names of old railways, for example, um, and they will have a door that's now closed off that you can no longer access, but definitely it is evidence of a station that used to be there. Sticking with the UK theme, these walls I'm using to kind of close in the stairwell that I've created are by Rick4000. He genuinely does uh, some of the best UK assets that are available in the workshop. I think a lot of what I build these days would not be possible without them. from here, uh, just looking to tidy up the last little bits of this walkway to, so that once you get to the top of the stairs, it is a easy walk into that kind of paid platform area, um, or sorry, the paid area beside the platforms. So once again, you'll see me using um, PO or procedural objects here to, again, take something that is almost perfect but um, just needs a little bit of tweaking and it is these little these little bits that um, I think really makes or breaks a build in terms of realism so you know I've got a nicely detailed railing it fits perfectly in, t in terms of what I'm trying to build and the age of that area um, but I need it to slope so using uh, PO I can select those vertices rearrange them slightly bring them down and suddenly I've got a really nice perfect um, handrail that goes with the slope of the stairs. And I can replicate that to go down on the next flight as well. So Surface Painter, as always, a great mod just to cover up some of these little uh, terrain glitches. Um, just makes it really clear in this circumstance you, you wouldn't leave that section unpaved. So by using Surface Painter, you can cover up the existing grass that would be there because it sits outside of the road texture for the road that's going past it. So here again, um, something that is almost perfect, but just needs a little bit of tweaking. I'm hiding the main vertical post for this overground sign and using that as a totem to highlight where the station entrance would be. And this is kind of you know, very common when you see London underground and overground and really any TFL service, they really 
make use of these 3D kind of embossed um, service roundels. Uh, to demonstrate where you can access one of these sections and I'll repeat this at various different entrances for this station as well. Um, yet again back in PO using it to customize some text um, I found a great PO font which is a replica of the new Johnston font that is used on the TFL signs so here we've got something that can look really authentic and um, you know, through tweaks of the spacing and the size and the position um, suddenly we've got a customized TFL Overground Roundel for the station, which I've decided to call Priory. Um, in London, lots of old convents and priories, so that you know Priory Road or Abbey Road is something that um, is kind of all over the city. So it's not um, it's not unexpected to have a station named after a former landmark that's no longer there. And there were, and indeed still are, plenty of old priories around London. So a very very good chance that a station could be named as such. Um, so here I've created a kind of a main entrance. So this would be a, a ticketed or a, an entrance which has got ticket barriers. These barriers were created by Meshed. Um, they're really quite clever. If you change the name of them, so they're a building asset, and if you were to change the name of them, um, they go from the TFL Oyster branded gates and change into the more generic National Rail gate, which has got the barcode scan in front of them as well. So here I'm laying out a bit of a kind of a temporary or a portable building. As I said, these stations were acquired by TFL in 2009 and they did a, a pretty major upgrade of, of them, but um, in some cases it was done relatively cheaply. So a lot of the buildings that support functions like ticket offices or information desks um, will be in these kind of porter cabins. Um, so, you know, not particularly glamorous, but definitely very functional. Also throughout North London, lots of lots of cyclists so you always want to make sure that any station that's kind of modeled after this is designed to support bike parking because people will definitely be cycling to and from your station for their onward journey this timetable board here is from titan i think it was his modular station project uh, again it's something that is kind of almost perfect and with a few changes in procedural objects, you can make this more customized to what you're trying to build. Um, a great tip here is to use colored rectangles to cover up something in the texture of that asset that you don't necessarily want. So here, obviously I'm not building a, a Hauptbahnhof, but we are building a London Overground style station. So by stripping out or covering that top section there with the trademark orange, TFL orange for the overground and then using that same new Johnson font over the top and we can create something that looks like it belongs at an overground station. Here what I've done is to quickly modify one of those gates and that was the prop version of the gate and I've gone and hidden some of those features below the ground. It's probably the easiest way if you want to take something within a PO object and get it out of there. Um, and just through some careful tweaking of the vertices that remain, um, we've now got basically a very small ticket validator. It's not quite the same that you would see on TFL. Obviously the TFL ones are the more kind of silver totems with just the kind of yellow disc where you touch on or touch off. Um, but in a pinch, being able to at least get a small totem shape, which is from the front of those ticket barriers, um, does the job just fine. As with any modern railway station, there are advertisements galore. Uh, I've not gone too heavy on this. I think anyone who's ridden on a overground kind of be shocked at how few advertisements I'm placing on here. Um, but all of this is just to give you a bit of a feel for the kinds of things that you can be doing if you want to build custom stations and make things a bit more realistic. So finally, I'm just going to finish up a few more details on the platform. We've got some great shelters here that I'll be honest, they look like bus shelters, which is just perfect for an overground station because as I said earlier, a lot of these upgrades and, and refurbishments were done relatively cheaply. Um, so if they could find a manufacturer somewhere who's got a couple of shells for bus stops and just whack them on the platform, that's about as good as you could get.
Um, last but not least, a few rubbish bins. Uh, I think I might put some lights on. I might have done that off camera. Um, but really, if you want to kind of really make your custom, your custom station stand out, make sure you've got the basics. Somewhere to sit, somewhere to throw your rubbish, a sign to tell people what station they're at, uh, and something to cover them in case of the rain, which is a relatively common problem that you get in London. And as I was saying earlier about jumping about the place, as you can see here, um, kind of finished almost everything about the entrance on this opposite side and then didn't put the access ramp in. So here I go, coming back to a little bit later. I think here it's a, it's a good example of how you can introduce variety as well. So obviously on the, on the main entrance, I've got steps, I've got the access from the street, I've got the ramp as well. Uh, on this side, a bit simple. And as you'll see with some of the later work I do, um, I've made that a bit of a kind of a depot or works area. So it almost looks like a back section of the station, which maybe was never intended to have passengers using it in the first place. Coming back to the stairwell that I created off the street earlier, these stairs are not functional, they're purely cosmetic. So your sims won't recognize them as a pathway, which means you need to create a pathway for them. And that's what I'm creating here. I call this wiring up pathways. Essentially what you do is you start with a visible pedestrian network and you use these really to plot out the path that you would like your sims to take. So you can see me kind of lining them up so that the path that covers the stairs themselves is roughly the same angle and that there's a bit of a gap and you know two nodes close to each other at any landings. And I've kind of done the same there to connect everything up at the end. The last bit here is key. So wherever you want people to join this new path, you need to anchor it to the ground. Finally, once you're happy with how you've laid it out, um, you upgrade it to an invisible pedestrian path. Functionally, it's exactly the same, but it just means that your stairwell you've created is what people see rather than that blank path. So the final thing that I'm creating here is to look at the catenaries and the catenary support. So these are the beams that hold up the wires for your track. All of the railway collection supplies props to be used with this. So the same elements that make up the beams on the network are available here as props. So I've got the edges and the support beams in the middle that I'm using to create my own versions of those catenary beams. I'm doing custom ones because if I just let them stay at the width they are, they would cut into the platforms and it would be right in the part where people would typically be walking, which is not a great experience. So I'm using some rulers to get the width of the platforms and then making sure that the custom supports that I'm building um, are roughly the same width. So I think it was about 14 and a half meters and then kind of making up the difference and tidying up the edges there. So they've got a clear single line um, that I can use and sub in to replace those areas. Which as you see, doesn't look particularly great, but uh, once I put these custom ones in and get rid of the existing ones, uh, then it will look much more realistic. The last little thing I'm doing here is using the cinematic camera mod to flatten the field of view completely. And I do that so that I can line up the, the bit that actually grips onto the wire perfectly with the wires themselves. Um, and by flattening the field of view, it makes it really, really easy to see the bits that you're working on. It makes those thin wires a little bit thicker and easier to see um, so that you, know, you can line them up perfectly. So here I'm just doing the same that I did with the stairway earlier. So I'm wiring up the pedestrian paths for this ramp that I've created. And what I mentioned earlier about anchoring uh, your paths to the ground, you need to do that at the end when it connects to the platform as well. So within the platforms, there are invisible pedestrian paths you can't see that are one meter above the track level and just in a little bit. You need to anchor your path so that your sims can walk from your path that you've created into the platform. Otherwise they can't make that connection and they just won't try it. So you won't get anyone turning up at your station. And 
And the last pathway I'm wiring up here is a bit messy, but it is for the overbridge. And I'll also show you a little bit of a trick how you can hide um, the bump in terrain there. So you would have seen that because I've anchored each of those ends to the ground, as I've lifted them up one meter to meet the level of the platform, it's pulled up the ground around that node as well. Um, we can use something called a terraforming network to flatten that out um, so that it doesn't um, bump up anymore. So you get two networks fighting essentially. Um, and it just allows you to flatten things down. Uh, they're really, really handy once you get to know how to use them. They're very, very powerful. This is where I'm getting that terraforming network here. Just drag it in and it will then flatten that area back down again. I think I do the same thing uh, at the bottom of the stairs, but you can see a few bumps in the terrain. Bring that to the bottom of the height there and it just makes everything nice and flat and clean. And there we have it, a blank, undecorated station, customized to fit right in with its surroundings. Don't forget to let me know if there are any methods or techniques you'd like me to cover in more detail in a future episode. But for now, thanks, and I'll see you next time.